Welcome to another Southern California Prep Insider Baseball Podcast, Southern Section. Tommy and Les here. And Les, we usually start with the top 10, but there were a couple of kids with some pretty crazy accomplishments. Kind of a once a year type thing, but we saw three of them. Three of them last yeah, week. Uh, yeah, once a year if we're lucky, right? We had two pitchers throw perfect games this week. One of them, Ashwin Chone over at Sage Hill, registered 19 strikeouts, Tommy. And then we also had Jake Gonzalez over at uh, Glendale, or Glendora High School, excuse me, Hit for the cycle, four for four with five RBI. So two perfect games and a cycle, and it's only Thursday. You got to be pretty pumped if you're one of those two kids who didn't strike out in that 19 strikeout game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does that give you bragging rights? You think if you're if everybody strikes out every it, maybe it was the same kid. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> didn't look at the box score that hard. Um, top ten though, we'll go with top ten starting ten to one, and you got a newcomer in there too. Yeah, Arcadia, number 10. They're looking to stay undefeated this week against Burbank on Friday. The story for them has been their offense. It's been lights out. Uh, on the mound, Chris Wilson is really starting to establish himself as a guy for college coaches to take a look at. So Arcadia checks in at number 10. Number 9 is Notre Dame from Sherman Oaks. They're looking to sweep St. Francis this week. Uh, they'll play again tomorrow. The story for them has been the opposite of, of Arcadia. The pitching has been just lights out. Tyler Stromsborg. The USC commit has been really, really good so far this spring. Number eight is Ukaipa. They bounced back from a loss to Carter last week uh, with a big W over uh, Redlands East Valley uh, earlier this week. So that, that, that loss to Carter, a little bit of a surprise uh, to those of us that follow this pretty closely. Uh, we thought that Ukaipa was just going to roll right through that. But, hey, it's baseball, it's, and it's high school baseball. Uh, checking in at number seven, Jay Sarah. They've bounced back really nicely from their trip to uh, Alabama there where they got, you know, pretty much shellacked and went 0 and 5, but they came back last week, beat Huntington beach and they're looking for the sweep here tomorrow of St. John Bosco. I saw a stat somewhere. They're 13 and three, the last six years against St. John Bosco. That's pretty impressive. Uh, Ayala comes in at number six. They've been rolling, you know, pretty much since the start of the season when they lost to Cyprus. I think it was the second game. Uh, they, they took it on the chin yesterday, lost 1-0 uh, to Alta Loma. So that was a little bit of a surprise. Uh, number five is La Mirada. We talked about the two perfect games. Jared Jones, they're all everything. Right-handed pitcher committed to USC was the other guy that threw a perfect game uh, earlier this week. Uh, that was against Bellflower. Number four, Orange Lutheran. They're looking to take the sweep against Santa Margarita to start uh, Trinity League. Those two teams will face off. It looks like that game's getting pushed to Saturday night uh, because of a, game, of a game at Hart Park, uh, but they won 1-0 yesterday. Uh, number three is Harvard Westlake. They're on a bye week this week, but they swept Crespi last week. Uh, you know, the Wolverines are just rolling, man. They're doing everything right right now. Uh, number two is Huntington Beach. They're undefeated so far in league, and they appear to be obviously the favorites in that league, which is pretty stacked and tells you just kind of the depth and quality of that team. And then lastly, number one, Cyprus. Uh, Centurions, man, they're just doing everything right right now, 10-1. and one. Uh, They beat Pacifica twice this week already. You know, the, uh, Coach Weber has got that team rolling pretty good. All right, there are the top 10s. We'll go over players of the week. We already mentioned the guys with the cycles and the perfect games at the top. Uh, here are some more and some guys also with no hitters. Um, Zach Arnold from Great Oak, the Oregon commit, was 9 of 12, in his, or is 9 of 12 in his last four games. He's slugging 1,250. I, lo I love the, the short uh, <laughs> um, span baseball stats. We can just have ridiculous ones, so I always read them. Uh, during that stretch, he also has a home run. Davis Kopp from Valencia, 11 for 19 with two home runs and five RBIs in his last five games. Also, reason I like him, I like the multi-sport kids. He's a catcher, but he's also the quarterback of the football team. So good for Davis Kopp. Um, next, Angel Sanchez, San Dimas, a 15 strikeout no-hitter. Not a perfect game, but a no-hitter. We'll give him the, the nod anyway. And another no-hitter was Ryan Sanders at Quartz Hill, the St. Mary's commit with a 14 strikeout no-hitter. You talk about Davis Cobb, man, really big fan of that guy. Some college programs going to get a really good player there. My player of the week, my players of the week, let's start with that Canyon High School, Brock Razook. Two relief appearances. The uncommitted senior went five and two-thirds innings, no hits, ten strikeouts. Moving over to Corona Del Mar. In relief, Esperanza got off to a 5 nothing lead with one out in the first inning. Jarrett Thompson comes in. 
All this guy did was go six and two thirds, strike out eight, gave up five hits, no runs. <laughs> Rono Del Mar came back to win that game. He's two and zero on the year. Heading over to Cal High, they they beat Santa Fe High School in a game we previewed last week, seven to one. Mike Gutierrez, a senior pitcher, allowed one run and six hits, thirteen strikeouts in the six innings to run his total now to uh, his ERA to .73, 37 strikeouts in 19 innings, Tommy. That's pretty darn good. <laughs> I'm not good at math, but that sounds like it's pretty close to two I, strikeouts per inning. That he's one strikeout short. Yeah. Brandon Lawrence of Dunn School up in the Santa Barbara area. He's a University of Michigan commit. In his three games in last week, he all he did was hit for a 636 average, 11 at-bats with seven hits. Four doubles, four RBIs, two walks, and a run. Oh, and he pitched an inning of scoreless shutout to collect a save. So those are my four players of the week. I always love seeing the kid go from shortstop, walk over to the mound, and then close the game out. Always awesome. Um, we'll go from here to our field reporters. We've got three of them. Here they are. What's up, guys? I am here with the head coach here at Corona High School, Coach Andy Wise. Now, Coach Wise, you guys are currently off to a 9-3 and three start. You guys of course have a tough league. Big A always has a tough league in just about every sport out there, but what are your thoughts on how your team has been performing so far this season? Um, we've been pretty good. The bottom line is about winning, and we've been winning. We're 9-3 and three at this point. Um, haven't really played our best baseball yet. We're a fairly young team. We have a bunch of juniors. We kind of run one senior out there, uh, juniors, sophomores, and we have a freshman out there that's helping us a tremendous amount. Um, so we really, it's, there's a big learning curve, and we really haven't got there yet. So I really like to think, and I sure hope, that our best baseball is in front of us. We've got a lot to learn still. So good for us being 9-3, and three, but we could be playing some better baseball, I think. You mentioned that this team has been a little bit inconsistent and that they lack in energy a little bit. Why do you think that is? Um, well, first of all, it has been tough being inconsistent with the weather. The rain has made it made it really hard to get consistent with practice, consistent with games, um, here, there, and whatever. And like I said, we got young guys. We got a couple new guys to the program, which they need adjusting to, and they have another time. And I haven't had that time to get with them and really tinker around and make sure they're on the same page as we are. So it has thrown us off a little bit, but we've maintained. We have a bunch of confident young men, so it's hard for them to just be screaming and yelling and all that. They're real. They're, they don't get rattled too easy, so we can get behind and, and they still feel comfortable enough. So they don't really get nervous or uptight or any of that type of stuff. They just kind of get after it. It has worked in our favor so far. All right, now when you hear this music playing, when you talk about the stories here at Corona High School, you can tell that it's a very fun environment that you guys like to keep here, but it's also a winning culture. So how do you manage to balance both? <laughs> Um, well, I think it really just comes from where I come from. I come from Santa Ana College, Long Beach State, played for a couple tremendous legendary coaches. Uh, I think they treated it the same way, very professional. We like to get our work done. We like to have a good time. We enjoy each other's company. Um, we're going to have some faith in each other. We're going to fight for each other, sometimes with each other, and that's part of it. But we, bottom line is we're going to have a good time, and I've always said it. If, if we're not going to have a good time, I'm not going to do this. So we're going to have fun. We're going to do it right. And part of doing it right is being able to win games and get kids out of here being successful in college and whatever else that might be. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a good time doing it. So for sure. Someone that had a really big year this past year was good old Rumple Snakeskin. Now fill us in on his story. You know, he had what he grew 12, almost 12 inches, almost an entire foot this past year. Yeah, he grew 10 inches. Um, it's always been an issue. He's so athletic and all that type of stuff. And now it's, he's not, you know, for real, like he's not as coordinated as a little goofy and it's kind of funny, but, uh, he's grown into being a pretty dang good pitcher. So he can't run around as well as he used to, and, and he's not swinging the bat like he used to. But he's a big left-handed arm, and, and hopefully we can you know, mold him into that and develop him on that end. Um, it seems he's always sick or whatever the case might be. And once again, yeah, he's not here today. Um, the Tsetse fly, supposedly, that's what they're saying. I have no idea, but he took a trip to Africa over winter break and uh, came back and was swollen up. and. Couldn't speak, kind of like I sound a little bit right now, a little dry out here. But um, yeah, and they took him in, and supposedly it could be a possible TT flyby. And we're a little nervous for him, but they say he's okay and it's under control, and hopefully we get him back. Oh, poor Rumple, that that story got me a little teary-eyed for a second. I had to take a second away. Um, but you know, talking about your time here at Corona High School, you've been here, you've been the head coach here for 10 years now. How much has this team really changed and grown over the years? Um, the program has changed just due to 
adjusting to me being here, honestly. Like, I had an idea of what I wanted to do. Like I said, I come from Santa Ana College, Long Beach State. I was also fortunate enough to coach under Dave Demers at La Quinta High School in Westminster. Um, he's the winningest coach in California, if you didn't know that. So he's done a lot of good, knows a lot of baseball, put together a lot of good practice plans, gamesmanship, so on and so forth. And I tried to incorporate that here in a complete adjustment. Uh, parents, kids weren't used to that at first. They loved it, but it did take some adjusting time. And two, three years of the third year I was here, we were fortunate enough to play our way into the Division One finals at Dodger Stadium. And like I said, that's after, you know, that's the third year. So that was the start of it, and we've been going up pretty much ever since then. So we're trying. It's definitely grown over the years. Now, you one tournament that we can always, always count on is the Boris Classic. What are you guys really doing to work on before that tournament? Uh, well, that's really all about league for us. Like, you know, the big eight is what this is going to be about. And if we're trying to do the best we can to get ready for those games, that will prepare us for the Boris as well. Those are phenomenal teams. They're doing the exact same thing. Um, they're preparing themselves the best they can as well. We've had some success in the Boris in the past. We've never won it, obviously. That's a huge, tremendous honor if we could pull that one off. Um, we love going out there and competing with those guys and just seeing where we're at. That's really what it is, is really seeing where we're at. And like I said, we have had some success. We'd love to win it, um, but it's an honor to be there in the first place. But we're going to go out and do our best. Thank you so much, Coach. Thank You're you for your welcome. time. Thanks for having me. I'm here with Coach Richard Mercado, first year head coach at Modern Day. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for joining us today. As a Modern Day alum yourself, you graduated in 2001. How does it feel to be back at your alma mater and coaching such a historically excellent program? I feel very fortunate. You know, since I, I got offered the job, I was ecstatic. My family was excited. Um, it, it's been it's been pretty surreal for the first few months, and now it's just kind of time to get to work. And you know, the boys have been responding really well. I'm just I'm just happy to be here, and this is a great place to be. You're coming into this position with a wealth of experience at all levels. When you were here as a Monarch, you were a Sarah League MVP, all Orange County catcher. You played in three different positions, catching, pitching, outfielder, and then you went on to play at the University of Arizona. And you were drafted by the Arizona Diamondbacks and played professionally and then returned back to Orange County to coach at Saddleback Valley Christian for five seasons. What would you say you bring to a baseball program and what is your coaching philosophy? Uh, well, what I feel like I bring to the field is energy and intensity. You know, I, I, I play the game a certain way, and, and I try to bring that out in the boys as often as I can. Um, I, I think the boys have bought in. They've been working really, really hard since they've been here. Um, you know, my experience has kind of helped shape who I am. I was fortunate to play for Andy Lopez, who is one of my mentors and, you know, three-time national coach of the year, two-time college World Series championship caliber coach, and I think I've learned, learned a ton from a guy like him. So I try to shape my, shape my teaching and um, my thought process around things he taught me. You had a solid 5-1 to one start to the season, came out on top in the Newport Elks tournament, including a 6-5 to five win over rival Jay Sarah. What are your expectations for this season? Honestly, for, for us, we're, it's an interesting group. You know, we, have, we have some really good pitching. Um, we play some good defense behind it. You know, we can we can win and lose almost every game we play in because of our pitching staff keeping our games close. Uh, I try, try to keep, keep our boys focused on from one game at a time, um, stay in the moment and just stay in that one game and try to figure out a way to grind through that one. And we'll kind of deal with the next one when we get to it. The Monarchs have a very strong squad this year, many seniors, and you also have six foot eleven <laughs> Hunter Cope. Can you tell us a little bit about the players to watch for this season? Well, Hunter's definitely one. He, he grabs your eye when he first, show, first shows up on the field. I mean, six foot eleven and a half. I mean, he's uh, he's very intimidating out there on the mound. He throws a ton of strikes. Um, he's made some great adjustments in, from the fall. He's only growing as a as a player. Uh, he's got a ton of interest from professional scouts as well. Um, I know one of our other starting pitchers is a two way guy, Alonzo Treadwell. He's a very special talent. You know, only being a sophomore and run up to 88, 90 to 91 miles an hour. Um, also hitting in the middle of our lineup. You know, he's leading our team in home runs right now. Um, again, we're lucky to have him for three more years, you know, so again, he's a big piece of what we're doing here. And then, you know, I can point out almost every guy on the team because the way the way our team kind of works, um, you know, we have a lot of guys, a lot of different moving pieces. We kind of shift in and out and guys have different roles. So everybody contributes. But, you know, I think our, our next one I'll kind of lead on is probably our third starting pitcher, Cameron Wheeler. Um, you know, he's been a staple for us for the last three years here up on varsity. Um, he, he throws a bunch of strikes. He has four pitches. He holds holds runners really well. Um, and you know, he's going to UCI and then our final guy probably be Kyle Scott, our closer. Um, and he's going to Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Com absolute competitor. You know, he's the guy you want the ball in his hand at the end of the game. So we're lucky to have a guy like him uh, to hand the ball off to if we have a lead. Thanks so much for helping us get a preview of the rest of the season, and we wish you the best of luck. Thanks for coming out.
Monarchs on three. One, two, three. Monarchs. I'm here with Steven Loera of Bishop Amat. Steven, you did a little bit of everything in this game, a complete game shutout, and you scored the only run. How are you feeling walking off the field? You're a jack of all trades. <laughs> Feeling great, you know, I helped my team get a win, you know, especially on a very meaningful day, so it feels good. This win takes you atop the Del Rey League, big win over LaSalle. How does that feel? Uh, pretty good to be on top, you know. We knew it was going to be a dogfight coming into this, but, uh, you know, we won. And let's discuss the couple of jams that you were in. In the fifth inning, it was second and third with one out, I believe, and you got out of that jam. And then in the seventh, it was a very similar situation. Yeah, yeah. How would you escape those two messes? You know, just throwing strikes and not pitching to strike out, but pitching to get out, you know. I had to help my team, you know, I, I put myself in the hole, so I had to get myself out. We're a few games into league play now. How would you assess where Bishop Ahmad is at? You know, we're not where we're supposed to be, but, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of time left in the season to, to get better, and uh, hopefully we do that over the season. What are the goals for this year, and how can you accomplish them? Uh, the goals for the year is obviously to go undefeated in league and obviously to make the playoffs and win CIF. Um, but our team goals, you know, to also to become uh, great two-strike hitters and to uh, get outs when needed. That's Steven Loera. Complete game shout-out for Bishop Amat. Also scored the only run of the game. Did it all. Steven, thanks so much. Thank you, too. Les, thoughts on Bishop Amat? Bishop Amat, man, they're off to a good start. Coach Hoggett's doing a really good job with that program. You know, they've got a freshman that's a guy to keep an eye on and Frankie Perales. I saw them out at Palm Desert for a couple of games, then I saw them earlier this spring. Looking forward to seeing them again over at the National Classic. And I mean, that's just a good team. Should be the favorite in their league, you know, with Sarah, who they play uh, tomorrow. So that should be a really, really good matchup. All right, team, we just learned about a little bit. We're going to go to our game picks now. It is the first one we're going to start with. It is a Trinity League game. It is modern day at Servite. This is game three of their little three game. Uh, I guess they call it the, the Trinity League tournament. <laughs> yeah, modern day, man, they've been cruising along until last Friday. They run into a really good team in Edison. And now they look to avoid the sweep at the hands of Servite, you know, and avoid that little four-game lo losing streak. Their offense all of a sudden just gone cold, man. Only three runs in the last three games, while their pitchers have surrendered 11. At 11, ele excuse me, at 11 and three, Servite is a team nobody's really talking about until now. Freshman Chris Grotus is looking like a future ace, and they've outscored teams 27 to eight during their current five-game win streak. This one's at home for Servite. Usually means something in this league, so I'm going to take the Friars. You know, they always say it's hard to beat a team twice, even harder to beat them three times, right? I'll go modern day. <laughs> I, I just can't. I can't believe that they're going to lose that many games in a row. I don't believe it. I, I will believe it when I see it, but I don't believe it's going to happen. Here you were going with them. Aren't you? <laughs> um, next game, we got Charter Oak and South Hills. Charter Oak, man, it's a good team right now. Another team nobody's really talking about. They come in eight and two on a four-game win streak. That includes three shutouts, Tom. That's pretty impressive. They've outscored opponents 33-3 to in that four-game stretch. Senior Gordon Cooper, is all he's doing is hitting 500 on the season, while sophomore Chris Sabalos is hitting 438. Oh, and they have a team ERA of .0, or pardon, 0 0.94 on the season. So they're getting it done both at the, at the plate and on the mound. At 7-2, South Hills is on a four-game streak of their own uh, since a tough one-run loss to number 8, Ukaipa. They needed extra innings to beat a pretty good Los Altos team yesterday, but they got it done. The offense seems to have found its, its groove for the Huskies while the pitching has been solid. Remember the name of junior Ryan Wentz for the Huskies. He's got a chance to be really good moving forward. In the end, though, I'm going to go with South Hills in this one because I just think their pitching has been really, really good of late. Yeah, I'll go with them as well. Sometimes extra inning games scare me a little bit because it means you have to go through the bullpen a little, but I will go with South Hills. I think I'll have time for everyone to be ready. Final game, it is Troy at Fullerton. Yeah, Troy and Fullerton, man, these guys play in one of my favorite leagues in Orange County, the Freeway League. And, you know, they Troy's taking the quick bus ride over to Fullerton and take on the Indians. And this is a huge game only because one game separates these two teams in the standings. And at 2-2, two and two, Troy cannot afford to fall behind uh, too much further. The Warriors have six sophomores that have earned innings on the mound so far this season, which bodes well for the future. Senior Ian Ramirez and junior Roman Arriaga pace the offense. For Fullerton, they're 7-4. and four. They're a game back of undefeated Sonora in the league race. Junior catcher Nathan Chong is proven to be as advertised. He's off to a great start hitting 484. While Carlos Cervantes is getting it done on the mound with a 0 0.82 ERA. I think Fullerton has a, just a tick more offense at this point. So I'm going to go with the Indians at home in this big freeway league matchup. 
Yeah, I'll go with them as well. Another kid, uh, his batting average isn't up there yet, but Bryce May is a sophomore for Fullerton. Uh, keep an eye out uh, for him in the future. Les, Tom, so, Tom, whoa, Tommy, you just went with me in all three games. You, what, no, you, not the first one. Not the first one. Oh, that's right. You took modern day. You took modern day. All right. My, my yeah. bad. Good call. No, I, I, I had to do it independently, and I, I unfortunately, we pick, end up picking the same. Um, <laughs> uh, Les, tell the people where they can find you. Yeah, check us out at prepbaseballreport.com slash California. You can hit us up on Twitter at PBR underscore California or on Instagram at PBR California. Our team of scouts are covering the state like nobody's business. We got 10 guys up and down the state. Uh, so if you're interested in high school baseball, we are your number one source at PBR underscore California, prepbaseballreport.com slash California. All right. Thank you so much. And um, we'll see you all next week with more of the same. Until then, keep enjoying the baseball.